Welcome to For Your Amusement, a theme park podcast that aims to exhaustively evaluate the world's most popular theme park rides to determine if they are world class. I'm Ryan Bergara. And I'm Byron Marin. And for today's featured attraction, we head on down to Isla Nublar to hang out with Chris Pratt and our favorite raptor, Blue, to discuss Jurassic World at Universal Studios Hollywood. You excited about this one? I am very excited about this one for a variety of reasons. I'm going to try, I'll say this up top to, to, to not be annoying, I'm going to try very hard to not complain uh, about the reskin of Jurassic World and uh, and to not mourn the losses that we have suffered in said reskin, you know, certain show elements, scenes that were lost uh, from the previous incarnation of this ride as Jurassic Park, which I know has controversial, uh, well, I don't know if it's controversial. It's controversial in the theme park community in, in terms of uh, this reskin, and I'm going to try and not lean into that too much. Some of it might come through, though, because I do very much enjoy the original ride. Not to say that I don't enjoy this ride, but... I was very into Jurassic Park at a very early age, like by around the age of three or four. I was very entertained watching dinos eating humans, not because I was into the horror element, but because I loved dinos. I was a As big... we have one right here. This is actually yes. the dinosaur from uh, Puppet History, which is a show that's on Watcher. Uh, unfortunately for you audio uh, listeners, you can't see it. She's a beauty. Let's take it back to the beginning here. Uh, let's, let's, let's learn some history about this ride. We'll take this back to 1990. This is when Michael Crichton published the science thriller novel Jurassic Park. During this time, he was already in cahoots with Steven Spielberg about adapting it into a film, which I think is pretty, pretty ballsy slash like that's a lot of confidence to before Spiel a book even is even published to be like, oh, we're making this a movie. If anybody can call their shot in this way, it's Steven Spielberg. Uh, yeah. And as a matter of fact, he was so confident in that shot. He also went over to what is now a universal creative and said, oh, we should also start developing a ride for this. We haven't even started shooting the movie yet, but let's also develop the ride. And it worked out because in 1993, the adaptation is a box office smash, which is great for the team creating this attraction because first off, they'd already sank a bunch of money into this. And now they get to double down on the animatronics because yes. early development, they were thinking, oh, we might go a digital route. And because the animatronics in the film were so convincing, they decided to keep splurging and go life-size animatronic in the actual ride, which inflates the budget to $110 million, which at the time was the highest budgeted attraction of all time. Just like the film, the attraction opens to rave reviews in the summer of 1996, and it's kind of been the headliner at Universal Studios Hollywood ever since it opened in 1996, That's basically. crazy. Fast forward <laughs> to 2015, Jurassic World is released. Once again, massive box office smash, makes $1.6 billion globally. And this is the beginning of the end. In 2018, Jurassic Park, the ride as we know it, closes and a 10 month renovation is made and it opens under the new name, Jurassic World. Clever. Clever girl. To ride the wave of the Chris Pratt. The pratt song Juggernaut. I, I have to say, this has no bearing on the pod or this ride in general, but I'm just curious. Jurassic World, you like it? Did you like the movie? You know what? I had a lot of fun in theaters. I I, I can't in good faith say it, it, it's anywhere near what Jurassic Park oh, was no, 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 on, no. A, on a storytelling basis, but I would honestly say it's my second favorite Jurassic Park film. I would edge More than it, Lost World. I would edge it just over. I think Lost World has a couple really good scenes that I really like. Like the raptor stalking him in the in the field was oh, absolutely man. baller. There are some silly ass moments and you're giving me this look like I'm just absolutely well, insane. I'm I think a few people I'm, I'm, would agree I'm listening with me. and I'm also hearing that distinct noise which is the sound of people turning their volume down as they're listening to you speak here cuz that's a flaming hot take. You know, Jurassic World was fun. I enjoyed it. Every movie that af that you know transpired after it, you know, sits in the annals of some of the worst films I've ever seen. <laughs> but I, I get why they did this. I understand that they needed to capitalize on that. Most kids knew Jurassic World, maybe more so than Jurassic Park. I wouldn't know. I don't have kids, but I'd have to assume that based on the box office numbers. So they had to make this move to keep that ride relevant. And they had to sink a bunch of money into it anyways because the animatronics were kind of out of date. 
Oh yeah, they, they I mean they were they were crumbling before our very eyes. I remember the the Brontosaurus at the very beginning of the ride. That thing was twitchy as shit. It looked like it was possessed. Now, do you think they're going to make the move on uh, Islands of Adventure? Because that, that's still, that's still river, river Adventure. Still River Adventure. And same with Japan. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I don't see why they wouldn't. Granted, I don't know if those parks need this as right? much. Universal Studios Hollywood needed this. They're landlocked. They needed another e-ticket. Just revamp an old one. Islands of Adventure has a gajillion e-tickets. So does uh, Japan, I would assume. Actually, I, I, I'm just talking out of my ass. I don't know what Japan's lineup looks like. It slaps. Okay. It really slaps. Good to know. Because, mm. uh, oh, yeah, they have Flying Dinosaur there, right? Flying Dinosaur. I think okay. it It's insane. Those parks do not need this revamp. I enjoy Universal Studios Hollywood having a, having a juicy exclusive. I like that for us. I love that we have an exclusive over here in, in L.A. We don't get that often. Let's uh, Let's get some fun facts here. Okay, now I will say you took a lot of my fun facts. One of them was the fact that this ride did start construction a couple years before the movie even went into production, uh, which is insane. I, I, you would never hear anything like that. But Steven Spielberg also did help design the ride. And here's the crazy part. I would have never assumed things would go in this direction, but s some of the things from the ride informed the film. Like, the, the things worked well in the ride, so Steven Spielberg was like, hey, I'm going to put this in the movie. Chicken or the egg here, it, it's it's kind of a crazy thing to think about. And if you think about it too hard, you, you know, you, your head might spin off. This used to be the largest water ride drop in the world, 84 feet at a 51-degree angle. And then what, Splash Mountain's, what, a 55-foot foot drop? So Something along you those got lines. Like another, you got an extra 29 feet on uh, what was formerly Splash Mountains. Yeah, that's right. There was more than 70 minutes of original programming filmed for this ride, which is crazy. Because if you have spent a lot of time standing in this queue, which I imagine you have because it's always a, a mega line, there is a pretty extensive video package that plays before this ride. It features Chris Pratt, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, and, you know, a lot of the BJ Wong, a lot of the cast from the film. You know you're in for it, or you're in a very long <laughs> line when you start to see the pre-show ride videos loop, and you're like, oh, shit, I gotta watch this again. This ride, you'd have to be there for quite some time. Last fact here, the Indominus Rex animatronic stands 22 feet tall and is 55 feet from head to tail. And makes for one hell of a curtain when the attraction is in B mode. That's a big ass curtain. <laughs> Do you mind if I add one more nerdy fun fact? Oh, if you have a fun fact that's off the cuff, go for it. Originally for this attraction. Oh, you got ready for that one. You changed your posture and everything. Hold on to your butts. <laughs> okay. They originally wanted this to be a Jeep based attraction. Oh, shit. But their fear was that they wouldn't get the animatronic T-Rex to move fast enough. And okay, must go faster. Must go faster. And they ended up going with the boat because the boat, there's a river chase sequence in the book that's not in the movie. That's amazing. I had no idea that they were thinking of doing this ride as a Jeep attraction. It, it, it harkens back to uh, Indiana Jones adventure at Disneyland California. That means that Steven Spielberg around this time was really heavily involved in the theme park business because he had a, a, a marquee attraction that are still there to this day at Disneyland and Universal Studios Hollywood. Still couldn't finish the ride, though. Which, what do you mean? You, you ever heard of this? No, I haven't heard this. What do you mean? He Wait, which ride? Jurassic Park. So he had him and Jeff Goldblum attended on opening day. Yeah. The opening day ceremony. And they had to stop the ride at the top so they could let him off before the drop. Oh, you meant finish the ride in the sense of like he couldn't sit through it. I thought you meant like oh, no, 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 three no, no, quarters no. of the way through the, the pre-production process. He was oh, like, my oh, bad. This. I, I guess I could see how that could have been I misconstrued. But he doesn't yeah, like drops, right? He doesn't like drops. That's why. Uh, or I think just, he, he must have a thing with heights because when they shot Temple of Doom, they'd have to hold production for multiple hours to drive him to the other side of the that valley in the final scene <laughs> yeah. because he couldn't he wouldn't walk across the bridge. It's kind of hilarious that Steven Spielberg, purveyor of thrill rides and movies and the modern blockbuster can't handle real life thrills. I think that's very funny. <laughs> Maybe that's why he makes them in movies. You know, let's get to the current reputation of this ride. But before we do that, let's have a word from our sponsors. We'll see you when we get back. And we're back. It's current reputation time. Let's discuss how popular is this attraction today? What are the average wait times? Where does it fit in the current theme park landscape? And uh, how do people generally feel about this ride? 
Right now, we are looking at an all-time average wait time of 35 minutes. 30? Wait, what? Oh, oh, average wait average time. Wait average time. wait time. So gotcha. you got you got to account for the winter and the weekdays in the winter. Right now, during the summer, that average wait time would be very, very different. Usually, oh, that's uh, true. Usually, you're looking at like a one to two hour wait easy during the summer. Yeah, it's like when a uh, when a hitter in baseball's uh, average is down because they had a shitty couple months. It really pulls that thing down. And it's not really indicative of how good of a player they've been all season, perhaps. Theme parks usually have a slower time of year, especially when you're a water-based attraction. Even though it's sunny SoCal, there's months of the year, especially when it, when it gets later in the day and the sun goes down, that Jurassic World is just not going to be as popular of an attraction. That's fair. That being said, its highest recorded wait time is 240 minutes. 240 minutes. That's... A lot. That's four hours. And you know what's crazy about that is this ride, if I'm not mistaken, has incredible rider capacity. Each of those boats fits 25 people, and they're always running through. I think they have a total of 16 boats. I don't think they always operate them at the same time, but there's never an empty loading no. station. It's They're always pumping these 25 passenger boats. And yet in- still three to four hour waits. It's indicative of how crazy the demand is for this ride. It's also indicative of how few, tr- <laughs> few <laughs> rides That's true. Right, Universal Studios It is also Hollywood. indicative of a, of a very weak lineup of rides at Universal Studios Hollywood. For now. For now. They're getting there. They're getting there. They're doing what they can with the space They're getting got. better. They're getting much better. Where does this ride fit in the landscape of Universal Studios Hollywood, but also the theme park industry at large? Obviously, there was no attraction like it at the time. I think it did its source material extremely well. Even this new iteration, although controversial at times. I I would make the claim that at the time, and maybe even now, is probably the most elevated water ride out there. Popularity, I think you would go with Splash Mountain, um, which soon to be Tiana's. But I also think that when Jurassic Park came out, it became the new king of water rides compared to Splash Mountain in terms of just demand and also what it did for theme parks in general and for universal at the time that was the ride even to this day when you go to universal studios hollywood what ride do you want to ride the most well you know my answer you know what what's my answer secret life of pets no you know what it is <gasps> simpsons don't you be coy you little <laughs> shit just say what you, you know what it is i think you want to see those dinos it's the tram baby the oh. studio tour Damn it. Of course that's the ride I want to get. I want to go to Universal oh my Studios God. Hollywood. I love that ride. You always want to drop that hour. <laughs> it is an hour long. But uh, let's move into some first impressions for this ride. Can you remember the first time you went on this ride and, and what effect it had on you? Because we both would have been quite young. Sadly enough, I can't distinctly remember the first time I went on this ride. I, I, it was, I was definitely, I would say I was probably around 10 years old. Yeah, I, I think um, I might have been around eight or something like that. I have a better memory of not being able to get on it than I do of getting on it because I remember just how crushed I was that I could not ride a ride of one of my favorite movies at that time. It was just devastating. The, the height requirement? The height requirement. Gets you every time. I tried the old Captain America thing where you shove newspapers in your shoes. Did not work. I think I was six years old, and I think I might have wept. That means I was like a fraction of an inch taller than you. At six years old, because there's another ride we're going to talk about one day where I barely made the height requirement. And ironically enough, I was devastated that I was just tall enough for them to be like, all right. Oh, because you didn't like thrill rides at that time? I didn't want to ride it. <laughs> we're going to, we're 100% going to talk about this ride. Oh, amazing. Uh, one day. But yeah, I was terrified of that ride. Well, it may be hard to, mm-hmm. to recount our memories of Jurassic Park, but I do recall fucking loving that ride when i first got on it i was blown away it was unlike anything i had seen in terms of special effects and animatronics and just thrill how about the first time you went on jurassic world that would have been april of 2021 it was the first day that universal studios hollywood reopened you may not know this because you got on it after the pandemic i did actually get on this ride when it opened in 2019 basically this ride when it first opened had a kind of lesser version of this Indominus Rex animatronic. I I recall Universal saying that they were going to make a big dinosaur walk. They could not figure it out. So the original version of this ride had just the Indominus Rex already standing there. It was in 2021 that it got a huge update, and now it walks. But as far as the first time I went on Jurassic World, the ride, I remember thinking, wow, this is actually so much more work than I thought they put in on this ride. 
I really did think they were just going to slap Jurassic World stickers on everything. I recall that when I first got off of it, I was like, wow, they really went out of their way to build new scenes. You know, like the uh, the aquarium scene with the, I think it's called the Mosasaurus. Mosasaurus, that, yeah. That giant ass fish dinosaur. And then a completely new ending in which the T-Rex battles the Indominus Rex. I was very impressed by how much work they put into this. It felt like a completely new attraction. Which, by the way, on our first ride, we hit the bottom of that drop and you turned to me and said, Byron, they didn't have it working. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? That was, that was pretty cool. They're like, Byron, no, they're supposed to duke it out. Oh, yes, that's what it was. The first time Byron got on this, the T-Rex did not pop out. It is a huge part that you see these two fight, and then you get you get knocked down the waterfall when the T-Rex comes out. I, I think overall my first impression was just this is much more involved than I thought it would be, and I was very pleased by that because I thought they were basically just going to, you know, like I said, uh, phone this one in. Do you remember your like your first impression of the Mosasaurus scene? I asked this because this reputation, if you will, of Universal doing all these screen based attractions. That's correct. And you come back to this new Jurassic World reskin, and the first scene you get is a massive screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. They have Universal has been known to uh, rely on plenty of screen. Uh, they, I would say, pioneered the technology back with Spider Man, and they have wrote it. Into the ground. We could talk more about that, though, in the good and the bad. Uh, let's start with some of the good. The construction of that brand new aquarium. I was very impressed with them actually putting a structure around a, a screen. I think we give them credit for that, no? I'll <laughs> give them credit for doing about as good a, of a job as you can with the screen. It is a giant that, fucking screen. That being said, the rest of the attraction is not screen-based and it's animatronics and it kind of feels a little inconsistent to me. It does. It does. It's a little odd, uh, especially because even the other screens that are featured in this ride, they're mainly just to show Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. Um, yeah, they're, they're more like little supplementary. They're like security they're not, cam feed kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, they're not dinos. Exactly. Another good thing I have here is the water gag in the aquarium. When you're going on this ride in the summer and it's hot... You want to get a little wet, and I've always been a fan of how Jurassic Park, the ride, and, and now Jurassic World have had these funny little cheap gags to get people wet, and when that uh, first... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. Be mature. Be mature about it. I, I said I didn't say anything. You smirked a little bit. Yeah, I smirked a little you bit. You smirked it's a little bit when I said that Universal has cheap, fun ways to get people wet, um, <laughs> and maybe it was how I said wet, but uh, you know, when the, the Mosasaurus Whoa. does that little dump... Uh, into the water and then the, the the water splashes outside the glass of the aquarium is is and also when the mosasaurus headbutts it and the uh, the water squirts out very fun yeah i do like that there's some sort of even though i'm not a huge fan of the screen that they there is like a practical element do you remember when jurassic park the ride had this summer of fun campaign they were running where they basically turned up the water on the ride like 50 percent? did they stop doing that i thought they still like Make the splash slightly bigger in the summer, but I could be wrong. I know that they definitely did that for a certain period of time. I don't know if it's still active. I think I. I mean, I. I'd, I'd hate to see it go if it. If it. If it has, I. I. I know I always get pretty wet on this ride, so maybe that. Maybe it, it's. It's just kind of there in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. But uh, I. I did enjoy that quite a bit. Okay, moving on to another thing that I liked. Uh, the dino scare that pops out of the water. I don't know what kind of dinosaur that is. Basically, it's like squirting water out of his nose at you. <laughs> Yeah, and it has like a kind of like a uh, elongated skull. Every time that dinosaur pops out of the water, people who have not been on this ride before scream. It still gets me. There's like an unnecessary fountain pop. <laughs> oh yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Always by the gets me. It just comes out of nowhere. It's like it's not even from a dinosaur. It's yeah, it's just like, kind of like what do we do? <laughs> we still have this fountain left over. <laughs> Yeah, let's put an old faithful geyser in the middle of nowhere. Uh, the plants moving in the raptor paddock and as well as the Indominus Rex paddock, a callback to, of course, the first Jurassic Park film where you see those branches and stuff move indicative of a, a raptor moving through them. Also, I just love the sound effect of these raptors screeching. <laughs> That's like one thing that I love about the films. They really nailed the sound effects of these dinosaurs. The T-Rex was a combination of like an elephant and some other animals and, and, and maybe a lion or something like that. That could be completely wrong, but I do know it was a hybrid of a bunch of animals. <laughs> Hearing them here live while you're seeing animatronics, very thrilling. And especially in these two scenes with the paddocks. Also, 
they went all out on this Indominus Rex paddock. Pretty huge ass doors, got the bloody claws on the outside, lets you know something foreboding is lurking around the corner. And there is, because the next thing I have here is more big ass dino animatronics, namely the Indominus Rex ones. We get an extra big dino animatronic than we had in the previous incarnation of this ride. You see the Indominus Rex right before you go up the lift hill. <laughs> When do you get that exciting of a lift hill? No, it's incredible. And By I'll, teasing that Indominus Rex. Like, and... I don't even know if a tease is the right word because for me, this is universal putting it on the table. If you are showing your Indominus Rex animatronic in daylight outside of like the lift hill before, you know, the big scene, so to speak, that should tell the audience, oh, we got a much better animatronic coming right around the bend here. That's why I consider it a tease. Oh, I guess it is a tease in a way. We're just going to show you the front of its face and its eye for a little bit. Then, yeah. Oh, up, up you go. Just wait till you see this motherfucker walk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also have the climb up with the raptor attack. Those were there from the original Jurassic yeah. Park ride. Still love them here. Falling out of the panels, chewing on wires. You know, the, things the, that raptors do. Yeah, the, the slide's so cool. Oh, the slide is really cool. And I remember in the latter years of Jurassic Park, the ride, these animatronics rarely worked. So it's nice to see them back in their original glory. I also love, this is very minute, but there's an amazing audio cue at the top of the first little mini drum. It just gets me pumped up. I, I don't know what it is about it, but it really primes you for that drop and lets you know you are going into scary town now because from this moment on, it's scary. That drop, that first drop, is in almost complete darkness. I think this version of the ride is much scarier than the original from the portion when you're actually in the dark ride. I can get on board with that. Because um, it's darker. It feels like it's darker in there. There's more scary-ass dinosaurs hiding. You got the little squirter person, the, you know, the guy that has, like, the, the funny little uh, mane. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what they're called. The one that kills Dennis Nedry in the original Jurassic Park. <laughs> what was that? You know when he gets shot with in the face with the, the goo? But who was that of? Was that Dennis Nedry? Yes. That was, was your Dennis Nedry? That was the Dennis Nedry. That, that's the cadence of his scream. <laughs> you sounded like that. I think it's a little deeper. That like character a, from yeah. The Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> that character from The Simpsons that goes, ha! <laughs> That's what you sounded like. I'm about to steal this bite now. There's those dinosaurs, and then y y it just the the ambiance. I don't know how they made it feel much more dangerous. You also see the Indominus Rex come from the ceiling, which used to be occupied by the old T-Rex. I think there's also another moment after that where a squirter pops out of a bushes and gets you again. It screeches at you. It's really fucking frightening. I remember yelling in the boat to a bunch of strangers that I didn't even know, this is so scary. And you also get to see Blue walk. Our little guy, Blue. He comes out of That's the bushes. Right. He does Blue, his little... Blue. Huh, huh. Pans it over to the big guy. And then you see, of course, the giant-ass dinosaur. And, you know, let's just talk about it. That big-ass Indominus Rex animatronic is marvelous. I mean, it walks, first off. I don't know how they do that. It must be on some sort of track that makes it look like it's walking. But the sound design of the footsteps as it's walking towards you... Absolutely terrifying. I love that they talk to each other. Blue might be just saying, you better get the fuck out of here because that big ass T-Rex is That's coming. That's true because he should be on our side, That's right? That's right. I love seeing the two of them walk out, talk to each other, having a little dino conversation. Big ass footsteps of the uh, Indominus coming out. And I mean, it really looms over you in the current version. When that dinosaur cranes down to put its head near the boat... <laughs> Maybe one of the scariest things I've ever seen on a theme park ride. I almost pooed my pants. Can you imagine what like a little like six or seven year old oh my must God. be feeling when they when they see that thing walk out? I couldn't even imagine. In fact, I when I took my nephew to Universal Studios last year, he was five at the time. I don't think I took him on this ride because I was so scared of that big dinosaur just traumatizing him. I can't think of any kid not being traumatized because you're you're terrified of it and, and i'm a you, grown and man you, and you're you could still at least look and be like that's a really impressive animatronic there was a brief moment when i looked at it and i was like that's a real dinosaur uh and then i my you know 
cooler heads prevailed. And I was like, no, it's not. It's an animatronic, Ryan. You know that because you're a 30-year-old man. I, I don't really know how else to say it. I think it's in the conversation in terms of most impressive animatronics in the entire world. Is that fair to say? I think it's top five. So I don't. have you heard of the Jurassic Park in Beijing? I have seen footage of that dinosaur and I saw two seconds. I saw two seconds and I turned it off because... Not because I was scared. I was a little scared, but 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 because I did not want it ruined for me. I wanted to see the full force of the star once I'm there, because eventually I will go there, and I have to imagine that animatronic is maybe a little more impressive. This circles back to how they didn't make it a Jeep attraction here originally. Yeah. I think they eventually pulled off what they couldn't do. Oh my god! In That's, the nineties, my heart actually started beating. Really I fast. haven't watched it either because it's uh, scary. I've seen like a thumbnail of that thing. I have too. Um, where, but everyone's raving about it. So that'd be my best guess. I'd have to see it for myself. Got to go to Beijing one day. I would love to go to Beijing with you, Byron. We could rip our way through, uh, some great food and then we could. Yeah. Your wife can call and be like, did you see the Great Wall of China? No, but I rode the Decepta coaster. No, I think this is actually how the conversation would go. I'd call my wife when we're in Beijing and I'd say, Hey, it's going great. We saw the big one. And she'd be like, Oh, the Great Wall. No, we saw the big ass dinosaur animatronic in the Jurassic Park ride i suppose it's a water ride in beijing right no no it's not a water ride oh damn i didn't even know that okay well now that's ruined for me uh sorry eh. you asked <laughs> i did ask that's fair i did ask getting into the bad here i told you i was going to try and refrain from crying about some of the lost show elements of the original ride but here we go let's just get it out of the way no jeep <gasps> what's that, going on there wait the one that falls down yeah. the side of the wall right <laughs> Granted, it was almost never working. I've only seen it work maybe a couple times in my life, which is funny because I've been on this ride, I don't even know, countless times. But that show scene, when it is working, the Jeep falling down the side of the wall is one of the coolest things I've ever seen on a ride. That's, that's a huge loss. Other than the Jeep, I will say, and this is the last one I will talk about from the old ride, losing the magic of that first dino sighting in the original version of this ride is a tragedy. If you recall, the first time you see a dinosaur in the original Jurassic Park ride, you get that great John Hammond VO. I think it's something like, time, an ever flowing river, or something like that. Come with us to a time before man where the river flowed through a newborn world and giants walked the earth. Oh man, you had it ready. And the gates swing open. It's the so good. Iconic Jurassic Park gates. You get the the main theme score. It opens with the gates. You see the brontosaurus, just like the original characters in the original film see the brontosaurus. That's the first dinosaur that they see in the film. You get the score coming in. A truly magical moment. I would say a core memory for me as a child. And now, you 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 the the vo that you hear before those gates open is like wow. Welcome to seeing the Mosasaurus paddock or something like that. It's some goofy ass dude. At the top of the food chain sat the Mosasaurus, apex predator of the deep. You don't approach that scene with that same sense of wonder. No, you do not. As you would seeing the Brontosaurus or the Brachiosaurus or the Ultrasaurus. They're all in the same family of yeah. long, long necks. To be fair, I will say that maybe they wanted this to feel like a cheesy theme park. That's why they went with that weird VO and not having that magical moment. If that's the case, I think it's a poor choice. I know I, I praised the aquarium for being uh, constructed in a way that made the screen better, but it's still a screen in no particular way or at any point in this show scene do I buy that we're actually looking at a Mosasaurus. You ever see a glitch? I have. <laughs> I have seen a glitch. I've seen one of the panels go out and it's just... It's just dark. <laughs> it's not great. It, it 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 completely breaks your immersion almost off the bat. Whereas like the animatronics, you could kind of buy them. You could suspend your disbelief. And that paired with the presentation, the score, the lead up with the VO, it makes it more of a moment where you're like, wow, we are in Jurassic Park now. Whereas this, ah, that's a screen. Which I hate to say because I, you know that a lot of like VFX artists or worked really hard on that. It's impressive, but it still takes me out of it. And also, we didn't need it. 
that's the part that hurts the most. I think they did it because they wanted it to feel like they had done a lot of work on this ride to make it a new version, to make it the Jurassic World version. I don't think that's what you start a Jurassic World ride. No, it's not one of the things that comes to mind when I'm thinking of, okay, what scenes and, and dinosaurs and characters can I port over to the Jurassic World ride? That's not even in my top five. In fact, that margarita dude in Jurassic World, when he's running away and he has the two margaritas, he's double fisted margaritas. I would have put him in the ride over the Mosasaurus. You know, that's Jimmy Buffett, right? I know. <laughs> I would have put Jimmy in this ride over the Mosasaurus. Have him on a screen. If he came on a screen. Hey, after this ride, you swing on down to Margaritaville. In City Walk. <laughs> I, I would have appreciated that more than the Mosasaurus. I, I, look, I know we're being harsh on this. It just, it really makes me sad based on what it replaced. Moving forward here before we get too upset, I do find it a little tiring that most of the primary exposition for this ride is done via a television and Bryce Dallas Howard and Chris Pratt speaking to you via the television. I mean, I don't know what else they could have done, so I'm not very helpful there. In terms I love, of, I, I think theme park performances are hilarious. They by do, the way. they are very funny, and it's very because you clearly, know they're like a lot of them are probably like contractual obligations, yeah, that are wedged <laughs> in between the productions, like while like. Oh, like, let's pull you over the side here in front of this green screen. We got to yeah. get you in there for the ride before you actually go. I also think it's wild that Chris Pratt is in so many rides. Now. I know. And you know what? <laughs> I, say what you want about him. He's a talented performer. I think he's a pretty good actor. Bryce Dallas Howard is a very good actor. And you, you could, you could they're sleepwalking. They're sleepwalking mm -hmm. through this. Like every actor is through any kind of ride pre-show. I will say this. If I ever am in a franchise one day. And I get the pleasure of being in a theme park attraction in which I have to act in it. I'm going to go so hard. I would believe it would be the performance of your life. I would. It, I. It's. You, you could make this argument. More people are going to see that performance than any of the movie. That's fair. I think you could make that claim based on how many visitors cycle through this ride every day over the course of a year. More people are going to see your work in a ride than they will in the theater. I find it lazy. I can't think of a better solution of how they could, you know, communicate. I guess the original ride, though, didn't it, have any screens, and it was pretty clear that the park was in disarray. Yeah, no, what they had was that person on the intercom basically saying, oh, like, we're, like, we're making, a, like, an evacuation. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to attempt to evacuate you from the platform ahead. Yeah, it was, a, it was a VO track of, like, somebody over the loudspeaker saying, everyone get out, danger. I actually buy that more. Oh, yeah, because when the T-Rex pops out, they're like, the T-Rex is in the building. I think that's pretty frightening. I, and, and it actually helps me suspend my disbelief more. But when I see Bryce and, and Chris come out on the screen and they're, they're up on the lift hill saying, like, do not do anything to set off these animals. I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> and it's like doing the fake glitching and shit like that. I'm out, man. It just makes, it takes me out of it. And I'm always just like, we'll set these animals up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. And then the last thing I have here is even now, a lot of the animatronics are already showing their age. They, they're they never really the best at upkeeping the animatronics in this ride, whether it was the original version or the current Jurassic World version. I'll piggyback off that. Um, my my final note for bad was just very prone to B-mode. Oh my God, you're right. When that finale of your ride, like that, it's an insanely impressive Indominus Rex, but God, that was soul crushing to see it just tucked behind a curtain. That's... They got to come up with a better B mode than that. Just have it stand still and, and shine a strobe light under it like the Yeti at Expedition Everest. Like, I don't understand why when that animatronic is working, they go to Bed Bath & Beyond and buy a giant curtain and just put it around the dinosaur. I don't... What was the thought process? Did they run out of budget to, to not re-upholster this curtain? The blue animatronic almost always works, and sometimes... It blue is just talking to a curtain. Yeah, it calls, so it like mo like it encourages the like everyone in the boat to whip their heads over. And yeah, you whip the blue is like, hey everybody, it. look over at the Indominus Rex, and we all look over, and it's a giant curtain. And to make matters worse, the boat lingers there for a long time so that you could interact with that animatronic and be like, wow, what an amazing animatronic. So when it's not working, you're literally looking at a black curtain for like it feels like ten seconds at least until the T Rex comes in and is like, all right, I'm here, and then you drop. But they got to come up with a better B mode, man. That's enough ripping on it. <laughs> let's let's go into the world class tests. This is a uh, series of tests, ten tests to be exact, that we have devised 
to determine if this attraction is world class. This ride has to pass 70% of the tests for us to deem it world class automatically. If it gets 60% or more, then we're entering debate land. We can debate whether or not it's world class. Anything lower than 60%, no world class pass for you. Uh, but before we get into these world class tests, let's have another word from our sponsor. So let's go through these very carefully devised tests one by one. Test number one, the average tourist test. Would the average tourist have a hard time getting on this ride? Is there a long wait? Is there a complicated queue system? It's pretty straightforward. It is pretty straightforward. During peak season, you're looking at an hour to two hour wait, but for the most part, you, you can't miss the signage. No. <laughs> it's right there. It's the first thing you see when you get to the lower lot, basically, just right in front of you. You know, there's even a single rider line, sometimes open, sometimes not. There's also an but express pass as well. It's express pass eligible. So if you buy an express pass, you can get on this ride faster, which is nice. There's plenty of ways to get on this ride. Once again, Universal Studios Hollywood, not the most stacked of ride lineups. You're going to want to do Jurassic World and wait a little bit for it. And it's it's easily acceptable. And this might actually lead us into the yeah. next test. But yeah, I give it an easy pass. I think sometimes it has a long line, maybe at the most like 90 minutes. Honestly, I, I rarely see it above that. I think that's totally fair. Uh, and, and if you really want to get on this ride, you can. I'm going to give it a pass as well. Let's move to the uh, second test, the Leslie Stahl test. Will you be willing to wait 60 minutes for this attraction? Yes. Yes, I would wait 60 minutes for this attraction. I think it's worth it, uh, particularly when the Indominus Rex animatronic is working. But overall, it's a, it's a fun ride. It's a great experience. Good storytelling. It's worth the 60. Let's move to the third test. Now we're two for two, by the way. Uh, the third test is the smartphone test. Does the queue of this ride have enough to keep you off of your phone? This is interesting because at face value, when you remove the screens, this queue sucks. It's just switchbacks, essentially. Like you said, it's just, what did you call them? Like a, like a big cattle pen? Cattle pens of switchbacks, exactly. Mm -hmm. That being said, they did film a lot of bonus footage to keep you entertained on these screens. This is basically like the ultimate Six Flags queue. Because most Six Flags queues have like a TV screen that's playing like skateboard highlights or some shit like that. That makes no sense for the ride. <laughs> I remember when I was waiting in line for X2, there was just footage of people riding a skateboard. And I was like, cool. It's the extreme ride. Uh, <laughs> or is, at least in this ride, it is attraction centric. It makes sense. It's unique and original. Oh, man. I, I want to say this is a pass, but because it's so reliant on the screens and... No, no normal person is going to wait in a 60 minute line and just be completely tuned in to a television screen that's playing like goofy material. Granted, you know, well-produced, but still at the center of it, goofy. I totally agree. Like it works on me for a few minutes, but I can like look back to recent times I've waited and yeah, I was on my phone for like half the time. No, me too. In fact, the, the idea that kept popping up is like, wow, this footage, and we said this earlier, this footage is not looping. There's more footage. That didn't make me excited. It just made me realize, holy shit, how long is this line? And then I went on Twitter and did stuff like that. I'm going to say it's a fail. It's a fail. Okay, moving on. That's two for three. Let's go to the Tony Stark test. How innovative is this attraction? Does it push theme park tech forward? Yes, at the very least, for how well they're able to get animatronics to interact with each other, like in that finale. Yeah. I think that took it forward. I've never seen anything like that. I think it definitely pushed forward large scale animatronics. I don't think there is a Beijing dino like there is uh, today if this ride did not come first. That's a good point. Because, you know, when they did open the ride, they did try to make a dinosaur walk. They couldn't figure it out. Then they revamped it again in 2021 and introduced the walking dino. And then, of course, Beijing comes out. I think that's all part of an overall push that this ride started in terms of large-scale animatronics. So in that sense, I guess it is a pass. A lot of the other stuff, though, reliant on some antiquated stuff, not the best animatronics, a lot of screens. I, I'm going to give this a light pass. We might have to revisit this at the end if it comes down to it. It's a light pass. Even the screen is pretty impressive. I just think for like, I don't, I still think it's kind of a is detriment it, to the. Is the screen impressive? I don't think the graphics are amazing. It's kind of like. Look, 
it's no way of water, okay? No, it is not. Um, so yeah, maybe not. <laughs> but no one is no one is is way of water. No one's Jim. Jim it's, is him. You know, with without the massive Indom- Indominus Rex animatronic, because like I'd never seen. It. Like I was like, wow, they can make them walk now. I remember thinking that the yeah. first time I saw it, like, holy crap, they can make something that big walk. Um, in that regard, it gets over the edge for me. I think that's fair. I'm gonna call it a light uh, pass for now. So let's go with three out of four. Uh, moving to test number five, the Hollywood test. Can this attraction be adapted for the silver screen? Does it have a comprehensible story? I think this, this is like maybe one of the greatest passes we have because it almost informed the film itself. This ride was adapted to the silver screen, I guess, but the ride came first with the intent of making the movie. In that sense, I think they're one in the same and it does have a comprehensive story, absolutely. So they, they both probably took inspirations from one another. Yeah, which is, chicken or the egg. What, when else can you say that with a with a theme park? So I think this is, might be one of the stronger passes we have. It unfolds beautifully. It feels like you're a guest in the you know in Jurassic World, and things are going awry. And four out of five. Four out of five. That's four out of five tests. <laughs> I think we're getting sleepy. <laughs> I did get I did get up at five this morning. I've been up. like, I've been really pushing through the cold brew and trying to. I had a brief second there where I was like, wait, what, what question am I answering again? <laughs> I'm like, did I just start rambling on about the story? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like, Ryan, save me. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> I swear to God. Oh no! <laughs> That's for another time. You bought you 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 stuffed that back in the rum bottle. We'll bring that up later. <laughs> okay. That's four out of five tests. Moving to test number six, we're getting dangerously close to this automatically being a world-class attraction. If it passes three more of the five. Yeah, it just has to hit seven out of 10, and, it, and it's at four out of five right now. Test number six, uh, the Simpson test. How likely is this to be replaced with something new? Because the Simpsons replaced Back to the Future, and I hope the Simpsons is replaced soon. Oh God, I don't think it's gonna be replaced, man. I really don't. They already replaced it once with this version, and that was in 2019. So you know what it's capable of. No, I don't see them ever getting rid of Jurassic World. I really don't. It's one of Universal's strongest properties. It continued to be even in the films. For now, Jurassic Park was also a smash hit in the early 90s. And it's still here. It's still here. Jurassic World is a continuation of that. I think in 20 to 30 years, this will still be here. I, I'd be very shocked if it was gone. You you don't, you don't wouldn't think it would ever get reverted back, right? No, That'd I don't be... think so. Unless, of course, they reboot the franchise, in which case maybe it would go back. But I'm going to say I don't think this will be replaced. And in that sense, it passes. It will not be replaced. It's just not on your general plot of land either, where you no. can just quickly bulldoze it down. No. Damn it, it's a pass. That's fine. I almost it's almost like I don't That's five for six. You know what? I'm just I'm just still bitter. I'm just still bitter about Jurassic Park going. <laughs> That's what it is. Test number seven. The signature moment test. Can this ride hold its own without its signature moment? Is this ride a one trick pony? Ah uh, look, man, the rest of the ride, antiquated animatronics, fun nonetheless but antiquated goofy ass screen at the beginning of the ride lots of chris pratt and bryce dallas howard talking while they're asleep we can both agree that the the signature moment is going to be that indominus and t-rex combo before the final drop correct no no i i had looking at the raptor paddock as my my signature moment watching those leaves move oh really yeah oh uh, okay no i i know you're right the signature moment is the indominus rex walking out and duking it out with the uh, t-rex at the end I truly think without that, which I've been treated to a version of this ride without that many times, because it's very much in B mode a lot of the time, it does not hold the same weight. When that is gone, the ride is significantly worse, and the rest of the ride cannot pick it up. It's a cool water ride with a fun drop at the end. Not necessarily world class if it doesn't have that moment. No. So for me, this is a fail. Five for seven. Well, that takes us to the last three world-class tests here, but before we decide the fate of Jurassic World, let's have another word from our sponsors. And we are back. The final three world-class tests. Let's get it going. Starting with number eight, the premature detraculation test. <laughs> Does this ride finish too soon? No, this is this is a this is a solid pass in my book. No, book. this is one of the longer rides that's out there. In terms of what you're being offered, a story, animatronics throughout, set pieces, 
yeah, this passes for sure. Most water rides in general are long just by virtue of they're a fucking water ride, so it's moving quite slow. Like, think of your Pirates of the Caribbeans or even Splash Mountain back in the day or any log flume ride. So I, I don't think this ride is too short by any stretch of the imagination. It's a clear pass. And that is now six out of eight. We're now in debate territory of whether or not this ride is world class with two tests left to go. Test number nine, the exit hall test. Do you see people be physically excited getting off this ride? Do they have that bounce when they're when they're walking through that exit hall? Once again, if this thing is working, like if this is firing on all cylinders and you have that finale, there's no way you don't have bounce if you've never been on this attraction. Fair, but also even if it's not working, even if the animatronic of the Indominus Rex is not working and it's in B mode, the drop itself gets people going. This ride ends with the drop. So that is actually a funny thing to bring up. It doesn't have like any like no resolution like scene or anything. It's just like climax, get out. Well, it, oh, I mean, I guess it does. It's like, oh, you escaped being eaten alive. Yeah, but I'm saying it doesn't go like through the formality of like someone popping out like, you did it or like some voice like, That's great work, true. everyone. But it doesn't need to. It doesn't. People, which is actually, I think, all the more impressive. It, do, it doesn't need to. I've had a couple rides on this ride where people applaud at the end. That's actually happened. So, And, and that's when you know it. It passes the exit. It has to pass. It's got to pass. It's got to pass by that. And also people are, are laughing because they're wet from the ride, of course. Okay, uh, the tenth test, the final test, which, by the way, we're at seven. It passes already. It's already world class. Congratulations. Congratulations, Jurassic World. Seven out of nine. You are world class. Let's see if you could go for eight. Uh, the fine wine test. Has this ride aged well? Has your opinion of the attraction appreciated or depreciated since your first experience? Or if it's a new ride, do you believe it will age well? I gotta say, this ride already shows wear and tear, and we're not even that far away from when it first opened. And the the other version of this ride, also wear and tear and constant B mode. I even remember the Jeep falling down the wall, often not falling, just being permanently stuck. And I think the further we move away from the buzz of the 2015 film, the more downhill yeah. It's gonna go. I just I, I think I think there's a massive audience that is very attached. A lot of kids grew up with this twenty fifteen blockbuster. Yeah. I don't think people are gonna hang on to it as long as we have held on to Jurassic Park. No, because it doesn't have the staying power. Jurassic Park is one of the greatest films ever made. Jurassic World is mimicking one of the greatest films ever made. I think that really hurts this ride mainly because it's 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 proven hard to upkeep. So I, I I actually think this is a fail. Like the sequels to it did not help. No, it did not. No, if anything, that hurt the brand. So I think this is an easy fail, honestly. Fail. Okay, so that leaves it at seven for 10. It is world-class, but if you recall, we did have that very light pass for the Tony Stark test of how innovative is this attraction. We both were like, ah, eh, I'm kind of on the fence because, uh, you, you know, the, the big animatronic pushes things forward, but the rest of the ride... Not so much. Do you want to go into debate land anyways? Is that what you're trying I'm to suggest? Not, I'm not saying I want to go into debate land. It passed at 70%. Even if we excluded that, you know, the Tony Stark test, it would be at 6 out of 10. I, I, I'm I, just feeling a little sour about it because I think it scooted by, by the skin of its teeth in that the big animatronic, which is often not working, is the main thing that pushes theme park tech forward. However... If you want to talk about Jurassic Park, the ride, that did change water rides and theme parks forever. It showed that you could make a water ride an e-ticket marquee attraction. It showed that you could put very, uh, for the time, sophisticated animatronics in a water setting. And it also showed that you could tell a very engaging story over a long amount of time on a water ride. I, I, I do think that ride in itself pushed theme park tech forward. And I guess Jurassic World, in that sense, is an extension of that ride. And combining that with a giant dino animatronic at the end, then perhaps, yes, it is a clearer pass. Despite everything I miss from the original version, I still think it's the best ride in the park. I agree. But I mean, like, if, if this isn't a pass, Universal Studios Hollywood's in trouble. <laughs> <You know? laughs> no, I think I think it's safe uh, so... to say that it's a world class attraction. Mm -hmm. And it passed and it did so uh, by proving it in our rubric, our very well designed rubric that was peer reviewed. Hey, you know, what? it's so far proving to be 
the ultimate test. It's a great to, it's a great uh, rubric. We're not going to sit here and you know uh, pat ourselves on the back because uh, I don't think anybody here wants to listen no, to no, us jerk would, each other off. I would I would never do that. But I will say that you know it's a peer reviewed rubric. Both him and I looked over each other's work and we were like, yeah, this is good. All that to say. Jurassic World, officially a world-class attraction with a passing score of 7 out of 10. Congratulations, even though it means nothing to you, uh, Universal Studios Hollywood. You're not listening to this podcast. <laughs> so, uh, But you guys are, and I want to thank all of you guys for listening uh, to another episode of For Your Amusement. Make sure you follow us on our socials, at FYAPod on Twitter, Instagram, Threads. Uh, and also uh, our personal uh, socials, at Ryan S. Bergara on Twitter and at Ryan Bergara on Instagram and at Byron A. Marin on Instagram. Crushed it. And, of course, we always encourage you to go try these attractions out for yourself. That's right. Um, Formulate your own opinion. See if you agree with us. Chime off in the comments if you're on YouTube if you think we're, we're dipshits and we, we, we fudged it. We, we, we really beefed it on this one. Oh, and also, speaking of YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, it helps keep the show alive in the video form. And if you're listening to this via audio, make sure you subscribe to the podcast as well. It helps us keep the lights on and keep things going for you guys so we can uh, deem more attractions uh, world-class or not world-class. But until next time, this is For Your Amusement signing off. We'll see you guys on the next ride. <laughs>